Gen Z represents that paradox. Open to diverse viewpoints and compromise in older Americans, yet at the same time, close minded in many ways. I just Ain't that the truth? Open to diverse viewpoints, yet not. Mm -hmm. Tolerant, but not. I kind of close myself off and I stay friends with the people that respect my views. But if this promised American dream. Ain't that kind of cringe? You only stay friends with people who respect your views. Yeah. It's like, it's like they completely miss the diss about being in an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, I'm totally in an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm is slowly fading can we really blame gen z for their activism and resentment and if there's no more trust is america heading towards collapse i guess we gonna see what do you think are the biggest american problems obesity publicist hey hey based good st strong start <laughs> okay yeah, that was a strong start. Based. Racism <laughs> <laughs> around politics is a giant problem. Uh, I think the educational system is a, is a big problem. Systemic racism in our country. Racism and sexism. Legislation really? harming communities and um, individuals. I would say police brutality. No, of course, racism. I would say there's spectrums to all those potentially being issues. But like, the biggest issues? <laughs> the, Obesity. The biggest issues? I think the biggest, like the biggest, if we're talking biggest issues aren't credit card debt like at 20 trillion dollars right now nuclear weapons aren't 60 70 percent of america's living paycheck to paycheck isn't it becoming increasingly impossible to ever buy a home so so again like those are issues for sure like there are definitely and it's and it, and it is different when a police officer does something bad because they have a degree of authority than when like a criminal does something bad because they're a criminal, right? I do think that's that's a little different, but I, the biggest issue? I don't know, man. I, that sounds like a bit. Sounds like a the hyperbole. biggest issue would have to be it affects the largest amount of people, right? So to statistically, some of those can't even be the biggest. Actually, they can be serious issues. Yeah. All right. I think there's still more people moving to America than people leaving America. Oh. <laughs> hey, I know you think there's all these issues, but why are more people coming here than than leaving? Yikes. Opportunities. They want a better life for their children. They want part of the American dream. The American dream is obviously very much still alive. Are you proud to be American? I'm proud to be this American person. How do you help the community? Oh my God. I have protested everything. And all the bills that they try to pass to remove. She protested. How much have you given a charity? How many homeless people have you fed? How many people have you brought in? You, you know, don't even want to know how much I've done for this for this community. I show up to every protest. They've done studies where they've examined the taxes of like the Bernie Sanders and like the AOCs and they statistically and by gross give the least amount to any charitable causes. Yuck. Move rights from kids. I believe them. Oh gosh. Americans export their problems. Today you see it, that gender identity that is becoming a social issue. Based. He said Americans export, export their issues and then gender identity is what we are exporting to other cultures. Yuck support that. People commonly say that America's biggest export is culture, but it's also the issues as well, it seems like. You're damn right. Yeah. So what do you think are like the biggest problems in America? Probably just like big corporations running everything. I definitely think that capitalism and corporate greed and big businesses and institutions taking a lack of action to support our communities and the top 1%. Uh corporations are supposed to support our communities? Mm -hmm. That's what that's why they're formed. Corporations, Amazon, who started with Jeff Bezos raising a couple hundred thousand dollars from his family to sell books on the internet is supposed to be supporting our local communities? Also, depending how you look at it, a lot of times, you know, when you go to the store and you're like, am I going to buy it here or am I going to look it up on Amazon and find it for like 20% cheaper? Uh -huh. You could say you're, you're supporting local communities with this, uh, with these, these good prices. Yeah. That's a crazy, that's a, cr that's a crazy <laughs> jump to assume that, corporations are here to support local communities. How does someone come to that conclusion? Socialism. Uh, yeah, I'm a tax the rich, eat the rich girly, so. Wearing Lululemon. Wearing, yeah, wearing a, <laughs> a $200 Lululemon outfit. She's like, tax the rich. Tax the rich. Which rich? Priest Provider Protector Collection is here. Priest, go out and make disciples. Provider, care for the least of these. And Protector, be bold in a world that consistently rejects Jesus. Stop being docile. Pick up some merch at blessgod.shop right now. It's only available until Sunday, so get yours now. Yeah, and not just that, there also seems to be less participation. <laughs> The U.S. military, known for being the world's most powerful, is in crisis, with 2022 being the worst year for recruitment since 1973. The U.S. military is struggling to recruit 
those from Gen Z. The younger generation doesn't care because we all like hate the military, we hate America. Many blame woke culture like mandatory diversity and inclusion classes and a perceived lack of focus on combat readiness. But some may attribute it to an overall loss of respect for the country as seen by many influential figures, including professional athletes. Colin Kaepernick, what a game! Colin Kaepernick, former 49ers quarterback and now civil rights activist, has consistently spoken out against racial injustice in America. There's a lot of things that need to change. In 2016, his refusal to stand for the national anthem in response to rising cases of police brutality raised national attention and debate. But Kaepernick wasn't alone. Over the years, he's had plenty of support from various athletes, including Brittany Griner. The WNBA player also refused. Yo, the, what he goes, he gets, he's so petty with this next, by the way. Which, really? by the way, I think police brutality was a real was a real issue. And I do think that after 2018, 2019, like there, there was some legislative change, specifically with body cameras. I think that was necessary. Because again, people in authority that have authority over what you have to do in an encounter, violating people, I don't think it's cool. Having said that, the biggest issue? I don't know if it's the body, biggest issue. Body cameras were is the best form of entertainment to hit the internet since oh, forever, far. dude. Uh, Dude, what, what is it? Uh, auditing the audit? What is it called? That one uh, channel? Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them. All of them. All yeah. Of them. So I think body cameras were a huge net positive. By the way, <laughs> to 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 the community and to police officers. Oh, 100%. Because now they'll just drop the body cam footage. They, 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 they leak body cam footage like rappers leak mixtapes. That's a fact. They're like Something what, crazy happens. Like, what are Boom. you protesting? Boop. There upload. it is. Oh, psh, <laughs> dissolved. Right? They, Here's a they, dead person. Yeah, they, they, they be leaking body cam footage all the time. Now, He's gonna go in on this girl. This is this is hilarious. Refused to sing the national anthem, stating that it didn't represent Black Americans. Griner claimed that she didn't mean any disrespect towards the United States, but in early 2022, she was forced to put aside her differences and ask for help. She was arrested at a Russian airport for possession of marijuana and detained for nearly 10 months. I pled guilty to my charges. I understand everything that's been said against me. Eventually, the U.S. government stepped in to free the basketball player, but at a cost. In exchange for a Russian arms dealer nicknamed the Merchant of Death that was serving a 25-year sentence, Reiner was freed after 10 months in prison. Brittany Reiner is free as part of a prisoner swap. Many people questioned the government, wondering why an arms dealer conspiring to kill Americans was traded for a basketball player who openly hates America. And all the while, Paul Whelan, a former Marine was left to continue his sentence in Russia even after three years detained. And so it's clear that there's a decline. That's a huge, huge, huge L. Yeah, that's not a good look. They gave up an arms dealer and left him a Marine in Russia, who okay. I think is there till this day. Imagine being the person that has to like weigh the odds of certain people's value, though. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like the conversation is kind of crazy in general because we're like, look, what has she actually done for us? And like, we're all debating like, like yeah. her value to come out of. But, you know, there are people in the United States prison that are serving sentences for weed. That's that's true. Are there still people in the United States? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yuck. Maybe not. Maybe not in California. I'm just making stuff up. But they still have to be like, we should probably... And, and then everyone that's mad is like, yo, she's not as valuable as this guy, which which is true. It's just hard to say it. It's kind of. Yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> you are correct. Sir. Hey, lesson. The, the lesson for everyone is don't be in a situation where other people have to determine your value to get you out of a sticky situation. That's a fact. Playing in national pride, even in areas that were once considered symbols of patriotism, from military to sports. And so I wanted to ask the streets on how this all happened. Is it racist to have national pride? As a, a German born and growing up in Germany, national pride wasn't something that we were given with a lot because uh, of our history. Well, cause, yeah, because you're German. You you literally have the worst national pride story ever. You're German, <laughs> bro. Of course you don't have any sort of history that you're proud of. You just need to be a good neighbor for the next couple hundred for years. For the next couple hundred years. You're on timeout. You don't get to have national pride. <laughs> you're on timeout. You make vehicles and hamburgers. <laughs> I don't think it's racist to have national pride. I think it's a good thing in a lot of ways. If it starts um, infringing on the freedom and the ability of other people to live in comfort, I think it gets problematic for sure. Everyone is going to say they love their country, but maybe the way they're showing it would be different from a person to the other. Is it good to have pride about who you are? Sure, but let it be based on your accomplishments, how good you've been to other people. Although those two things might overlap and impact each other, I don't think that's a, a binary. But is America... The that's actually the most sensible answer I've heard, wow. I've heard in this in this From thing. Lululemon. From the Lululemon girl. She did... That was a the only country that's struggling with galvanizing national pride. Because for Russia, the key was religion. Now this takes an interesting turn. Soviet Union, Russia? Bro, we didn't go to church. <laughs> we didn't know nothing about no church. Now everyone's orthodox? 
Shout out Putin. Putin's on it, man. In the 1990s, Orthodox Christianity was uncommon as only a third of Russians identified with the religion. But now, if that, that's crazy. That, like that went to church. If that, now 72% of Russians are Orthodox, which was largely influenced. <laughs> Yo, from a third to 72%. Cheap. Putin. Putin's like, y'all. Oh, y'all going to church? What if? What if Putin was like chose to be Protestant? Like, would we have like 70% of Russia being like <laughs> singing the Russian translation of Hillsong? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That have their that wouldn't happen because because Russia is too hardcore. Yeah, Orthodox is pretty like yeah militant. Yeah, yeah, Orthodox is, is, is yeah yeah by campaigns that targeted the youth. Similarly, in 2005, the Kremlin started pro-government youth organizations in an attempt to instill national pride as Putin recognized as the key in maintaining his political power. Analysts say he's used the Russian Orthodox Church to promote a so-called pivot to traditional values. But it wasn't just the leader in Russia that was thinking this way. This man baptized himself. Huh? Did he just baptize himself? No, no, no. I think he was doing a cold plunge. Oh, okay. He, I don't think he was baptized. No, but he, he did a, the... Yeah, I mean, right. cr pr from my understanding, that dude is pretty... He, he pr personifies himself as being very religious. And, and Russia, since Putin, Sweet has guy. been very straight edge. Drugs are bad. Alcohol is bad. It's all bad. Whereas the Russia I grew up in... Alcohol is good. They was drinking, bro. They was communist <laughs> Russia? Soviet Union? Bro. That's the Russia we know, know today. That's the Russia I knew... They was all derelicts. They was all there was all womanizers. They they'd beat on their wives. They'd get drunk and they and they would party hard, you know. And church was not a thing. God was not a thing. Wow. For years, national pride has been an important asset for President Xi Jinping's party, even in spite of criticisms from Chinese journalists. In 2019, a Chinese app that roughly translates to Study from Xi, Build a Powerful Country was launched. It pushed pro-Chinese messages and provided a one-stop shop for news about Xi's political doctrine. To encourage activity, provided incentives. Chinese citizens could earn points for their social credit score based on their app. Social credit score is nuts. Usage time and participation in quizzes about the Chinese Communist Party. And when journalists Feng Feng and Chu Zimin both criticized this indoctrination, they were swiftly jailed as traitors. And in a country like America where freedom of speech supposedly exists, what would foreigners and Americans that hate America what do you think are the biggest American stereotypes? I think ignorance is a big American stereotype. Americans not being able to like pinpoint exact countries. That's, that's always a funny thing because I'm like, it has to be a joke, right? Fast food is one of the biggest. The ego is like high. So fast food and arrogance. Yeah. Okay, so here's my, here's my thought. You tell me what you think about this. All right, hit me. I think most people, when they're below the age of 25, tend to lean more liberal, generally speaking, especially okay. if you're going to a college. Mm -hmm. Right. It's that whole like if you're if you're not a liberal before the, uh, you know, below the age of 35, you have no heart. If you're not a liberal after the age of 35, you have no brain. <laughs> That's right? funny. It's, dude. it's, that, it's that ultra. So uh. I think what happened now is that the 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 stirring of the Internet has just taken kind of people's natural inclinations at, based on their age, based on their lack of understanding how to generate value and how to how to be, you know, how to service other people in the economy and how to earn anything. It's it, that has just been inflamed with social media, and it's just become more and more uh, polarizing. You know what I mean? It's just become more and more polarizing, and so it's not that like, oh my gosh, look at these Gen Zers. They're so they're all liberal snowflakes. They were saying the same thing about millennials. Oh yeah, they're saying the same thing about millennials, right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying the same thing about Gen Xers. Like, oh man, these guys are so crazy, right? Like I remember growing up watching WWE, and D Generation X was the wrestling collective that they were a part of and they were super, de they were degenerates, right? They were yeah. degenerate. So it's like every every single younger demographic goes through this to various degrees. The question is, how much of this is going to be permanent? Like, is Gen Z going to eventually snap out of it and, and become more moderate as they develop, as they get older, as they realize that, uh, yeah, no, a lot of these concepts that we grew up with are kind of nonsense when you actually go down the... I actually think Gen Z is probably already swinging the other way. You think so? Yeah, because, I mean, who's who's the influx of adults that we've gotten over the past year or two mm -hmm. that have adjusted those Gallup polls mm -hmm. where certain relationships are are uh, looked down upon more than others? Mm hmm you're that. talking about, uh, let me see if I can, you're talking about this. <laughs> you always have this ready? <laughs> I always got this chart ready. You're talking about this? Yeah, 100%. And you think this is Gen Z? I No, I think, I think. Zach's talking about the yeah, I view think, Americans' opinions of morality becoming more conservative in the last year. I think, um, I think this is millennials getting older, so aging out of liberalism. Uh -huh. And I think this is an influx 
of um, Gen so, Zers who are also moving LG, the curve. Yo, LGTV catching L's out here. Bro. Yeah, no, yeah, it's huge. Seven point dip. People, less people think that's a big dip. Yeah, and but I, so my point, like I like Gen Z just became adults mm. within the past couple of years, mm -hmm. and so now they're voting on these things, mm -hmm. and they're and they're having thoughts. So I think like the extremes always get highlighted of mm -hmm. like the crazy liberal mm. Gen Zers, but what about like, there's a lot of regular people in the world. Mm -hmm. And that, I think- that, that, that aren't on the internet. That aren't on the internet. Yeah, and I think those Gen Zers see the crazy Gen Zers and get pushed over a little bit. Just so subtly. They're yeah. like, oh, I'm still liberal for sure. But, you know, it's probably better to have a mom and a dad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they don't even realize they're saying like conservative values. They're just, they're just like, he these people are a little probably crazy. probably good to have a mom dad yeah, yeah man i think i think i think you're right i think what i'm seeing is more people becoming more conservative priest provider protector collection is here priest go out and make disciples provider care for the least of these and protector be bold in a world that consistently rejects jesus stop being docile pick up some merch at bless god dot shop right now it's only available until sunday so get yours now